So just a quick heads up, don't watch the final trailer as it contains spoilers, which I absolutely despise. The other two are fine for first impressions, but with that said, let's talk about the movie. Going into it, I did have some decent background with Deadpool, as the first movie still holds up in a lot of ways in terms of comedy, action, and most importantly, setting up the universe that gives us a proper introduction on who Deadpool is as a character. The second movie I do like more in terms of the story factor, emotional factor, Actor and the characters they introduce, like Fire Fist and Juggernaut, are pretty entertaining and have a lot of interesting background as well. However, my Wolverine knowledge is kind of vague as I never really grew up with X-Men material, with the only thing I've experienced was 2017's Logan way back when. And while I did really like that movie, I haven't watched it in 7 years, so I only really knew stuff about the funny 4th wall breaking red guy, but that all just makes me even more grateful that this movie does a great job giving both titular characters the perfect amount of background that not only ties into their motivations, but it makes this crossover feel organic and general. In this movie, Deadpool is trying to become an Avenger, which could possibly be a sign for the future, but he gets rejected because of how immature he is. However, he gets captured by the Time Variance Authority, or TVA for short, and learns that his universe is going to be destroyed because it is missing a Wolverine. So Deadpool finds an alternative Wolverine from a different universe, but he's not considered good enough by Mr. Paradox due to letting everyone he knows and loves in his universe die. And throughout the film, we see Wolverine constantly overrun by guilt because of this, and that's why I love the way this movie sets up both characters. Even when you remove the tragedies of both heroes, their personalities differ very clearly. Deadpool is a sort of carefree and wisecracking type of guy, despite horrible things happening to him in the past, especially when it comes to why he can't die. Meanwhile, Wolverine had way worse happen to him in the past, which is why he is always so somber and serious. Due to these differences, the duo builds off each other super well, and their dynamic is excellent and even hilarious at times, and their different struggles and background make you want to see them both succeed. Both villains are very entertaining as well. Matthew McFadden as Mr. Paradox was very charming and funny, and he served as an amazing paradox little Disney and how they just ruined the MCU by excessively milking movies and shows just for the sake of making a quick buck. Just like every Deadpool movie, the meta humor is always a welcome addition, and this movie in particular is no exception. I guess the excessive swearing in this movie does bring the humor down a little bit, but it's still a great factor overall. I thought Emma Corrin as Cassandra Nova was superior to Mr. Paradox, and for good reason. She absolutely stole the show every time she was on screen. She is such a threatening and manipulative antagonist whose abilities give me chills every time they came into play. Unfortunately, despite her being the better villain, she doesn't really get as much screen time as I thought she deserved to. Speaking of time, I definitely feel like this movie is a little too long. There are a lot of scenes that did feel sluggish, especially during the middle when the heroes are in the void, which while it does have its good qualities, is kind of a boring location when not in Cassandra's lair. This movie also has a lot of multiverse shenanigans going on, which is not a factor I would say I didn't like, as it is a hundred times better than 95% of most multiverse movies. Movies nowadays. Plus, it was exciting to hear a bunch of Marvel adults and nerds cheering when a crossover character appeared, as I don't have experiences like that in the theater often, so I had a good time with that. As for the actual crossover characters themselves, most of them did feel kind of pointless to the mix. They either immediately die within 10 minutes, or they show up in a few scenes and immediately get forgotten about afterwards. Plus, I don't like how a lot of the characters from the previous Deadpool films get sidelined in this movie. No joke when I say they only show up around the beginning and end, and sadly don't get anything to do in this movie. Stefan Kapasik as Colossus was one of my favorite performances in the last two movies, and I don't recall a single line from him in this movie, which really sucks. At least the action scenes mostly made up for the drawbacks, especially the zoom-ins and outs during pause shots in those sequences, and while the climax did have stuff I didn't care for, I thought it was a solid enough way to close the film. Overall, while this movie does have some great strengths that would make me want to revisit it in the future, there are quite a few weaknesses that do make it the weakest in the Deadpool trilogy. But even if the worst one is still good, that's when you can tell that I really like this trilogy, and probably will for years to come. Very solid 7 out of 10. I would recommend you go check it out in the theaters even if you did give up on the MCU a long time ago, which is for good reason to be honest, but that shouldn't stop you from giving this film a shot. Anyways, those were my thoughts on Deadpool and Wolverine. Let me know yours in the comments down below, and keep calm and let life carry you on.